Welcome to video 9 in a series of introductory videos for SolidCam. This video's topic is 3D eye machining. So in the previous video, we saw how 2D eye machining works for just pocketing. In this video, we'll talk about how 3D eye machining works as an overall 3D recognition toolpath. So I'm going to skip over some of the stuff related to the definition of eye machining. We covered that in the previous video. So we're going to go right into 3D eye machining in this video. Let me just open up that toolpath. In 3D eye machining, we still have the multi-tool window. So in our tool section, we actually are adding the tools. And in order, they will be rest milling operations. In our geometry, there is really no geometry for you to choose. Um, you'll see that it defaults to the target. So it's using our target definition that we, we assigned when we first open up the part. To cover that, I would refer you back to the setup of new cam part video. So all we need to do is just let it choose the target. The only time you would actually choose new geometry here is if you need to include something other than the target in this machining. Uh, that could be maybe um, if you needed to cap a surface with a, a cap a hole with a surface. Again, there's a training video on that on our YouTube channel. Or any additional geometries that for this one particular toolpath, you need to focus on those solids or those surfaces rather than whatever you've selected as the target. Under tool, again, we covered this in the previous video multi-tool. So I refer you to that video to see exactly what all this is about. And under levels, you'll see that it actually says upper level and lower level here, not anything related to depth. That's because as a recognition toolpath, we're, we're actually defining here what levels we want to look at the target between. As a recognition toolpath, we're telling it the machine from the stock to achieve the target. And we're telling it in this window to look between two Z levels to understand where exactly around the target from what top to what bottom we want to machine. So in this case, I'm just doing the entire part. But if I wanted to do 3D eye machining just down to, let's say, that level there, it would recognize everything about the target to that point. I'm choosing the bottom of the part, which means I'm going past that tab. But as a recognition toolpath, it's going to see that tab there and machine above that tab and around that tab. So um, Usually I just choose the bottom of the part because I'm getting it to look at the entire target for me anyway. Technology Wizard is the same as it was in the previous video. So I would refer you to that for the details of this window. Under technology, again, similar to what we saw with 2D eye machining, except that this is now a fully 3D toolpath. So we have the additional parameter. In addition to wall offset, floor offset, we have scallop height. And if I put my mouse in there and you look at the bottom left corner, the scallop height is literally the height of that triangle. How much, uh, what is the height of the step we're leaving behind on any tapered surface, any curved edge? This is a fully 3D toolpath. It's going to look at anything that is not vertical and not horizontal and add steps to it. But other than that, this is pretty much the same as eye machining. It's going to calculate fees and speeds, step over, step down, cutting angle, everything for me to achieve the toolpath. And because I have two tools set there, it actually generated two eye machining toolpaths one for the one inch tool on the inside and the outside and the tabs. So you can see there's that one pass there that does the tab. And then for the half inch tool, it just went back and did whatever was missing from the half inch tool. So that includes not only this corner, but the corner of the overall part as well. Good example of that is also this corner over here, where it did this inside area, but also these corner rads over here as well. The one inch tool could not complete those. If we take a look at that in Solid Verify, we can get a better feel for how this actually works. So starting from the stock, does the outside, does the inside, does those corners. So recognizes the full stock. Now, the only other uh, addition to that would be as a recognition toolpath, you can see it did pretty much everything. It took the stock, turned it into the target, and removed all the material, roughed it out completely. But what if I didn't want to do the entire part? What if I could do the other part with maybe pocketing, profiling a little easier, a little quicker to program? You can see there's some calculation time associated with 3D eye machining. Maybe I don't want to sit through the, the recognition of the entire part. Well, you can add what's called a working area and get it to focus just on a specific area. And that's essentially what I did here. I told it to stay within, if I just open this up, and I go to my geometry section. If I go to working area define, I actually told it to stay completely within this chain up here, the top edge of the pocket. That way it recognizes the pocket, recognizes those tabs, and doesn't bother with the outside of the part. The outside of the part, I could probably do just as easily with the 2D eye machining or profile, whatever I want to do for the outside of the part. It's not as complex as the inside, so I probably would save the 3D eye machining calculation for the inside. And that 
definition there is the same as what you've seen previously. I just kind of open this up, go to define. It's the same chain selection window we've seen with the other previous toolpath in pocketing and profiling. To manipulate this window, I would refer you to the pocketing toolpath where I cover what all these buttons here do. Let me just engage that back again. When you choose your working area, it's limiting the travel of the tool within that chain, but you can tell it how much the tool movement can be limited with this section here. So I have it currently set to external, meaning that I'm telling the tool to machine only what it finds inside of that working area, but I'm allowing it to reposition outside that working area. This is useful if, for our scenario here, where I just need to machine an area, but I don't really care about limiting the travel outside of that area. It's okay to reposition outside there. But in the case where you're limiting the travel of using a chain to avoid something, you want to work only within this one area because maybe it's an undercut, or maybe there's uh, a, a wall around there, or anything that is not recognized by the stock or the target definition, maybe it's just a fixture or something like that. If you have fixture solids, you can set them up like we saw in the setup video in, in, uh, in video three. But let's say you didn't bring in a solid and you're just using chains to limit the travel of everything and you want to keep the tool within a certain area. You can switch this to internal, meaning that it only machines what it finds in that area and only stays within that area and repositions as well. So it doesn't leave that chain. Center is a step above that. Basically, it only machines what it finds in that chain and is limited to only wandering outside that chain until the center of the tool. So in this scenario, it lets me go right to that edge there because the center of the tool goes right to that corner. I can machine this completely without really leaving that chain. And then tangent is the same sort of thing. It just goes as far as a tangent point. So it has to stay in contact with that chain. That's essentially all that means. But I'll leave this at external and we can exit out of here. But it is still 3D eye machining, so it engages that full functionality of eye machining, but only within that one window that we've generated. This is a very useful toolpath, and if you have it, I definitely would say using it even as your first one because it roughs out the part completely. As you saw with the scallop definitions, I can rough this thing within, uh, let's say, 10 thou of every face. I can go right from this roughing toolpath to finishing. This is also useful for if you have um, any kind of three dimensional part and a custom stock. Once you define your stock and your target, that's what this toolpath is looking at. So you don't even need to really look at levels and geometries and such. You can basically just tell SolidCam, this is the stock I'm working with. It's an oddball stock. I need to machine this part. And it'll just eliminate air cuts and machine all the material that you told it is there. Any questions of this or anything else from SolidCam, just give us a call at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. You can send us your parts or your questions via the ticket system at SolidCamSupport.com. And stay tuned for the rest of the videos on this YouTube channel and in this intro series. Thanks for watching.